Hello, welcome to the installation video for your scissor loft. Today, we'll be going over the necessary steps to assemble and mount your storage system correctly. Before we begin, make sure you have both of the boxes we sent you and the required tools. A stud finder, safety glasses, marking pencil, tape measure, drill, 3 16 inch drill bit, 3 quarter inch, 1 half inch, 7 16 inch, 3 8 of an inch sockets, a 7 16 inch wrench, and a 7 32 inch Allen wrench. First, you'll want to put on your safety glasses to avoid any possible harm to your eyes or face. Begin by finding the ceiling joists. Use your stud finder to locate the ceiling joists. Most ceiling joists are 24 inches apart on center. After finding the joists using your stud finder, we recommend doing our drill test to ensure that you find the exact center of the joist. Use a small drill bit and make a line of 5 to 7 holes on your joist to determine where the edges of your joist are. By missing the joist on each end, you can locate the exact center of the joist. Step 1. Assemble and mount your support rails. If your garage doesn't have drywall, you can mount the support rails directly to the ceiling joists. For starters, we're going to mount three support rails on the ceiling. The support rails must be 21 and 1 quarter inch apart from each other, from center to center, and mounted perpendicular to the ceiling joists. Each of the three support rails are composed of four 26-inch sections. Each 26-inch support rail has a male and female end. Use a rubber mallet if necessary to ensure that the male ends are fully inserted into the female ends when assembling your support rails. Now, we are going to mount your support rails to the ceiling. Ensure that you have at least 5 inches of clearance from any wall to your support rails. Always pre-drill using a 3 16 inch drill bit before inserting the lag bolts. Ensure that you pre-drill into the very center of the joist. Use a minimum of one lag bolt and washer per 26 inch section of your support rail. Use your drill and a one half inch socket to fasten your lag bolts. Do not over tighten. We recommend fastening your outer lag bolts to a maximum of 5 inches from each end of your support rails. Now we're going to mount the middle support rail 21 and 1 quarter inch from the center to center of the first support rail. We find it best to measure 20 and a half inches from the inside edge of your first support rail to the center of your next support rail. Mark 20 and a half inches with a pencil. This is where your lag bolts will be fastened. Ensure that you pre-drill and fasten your lag bolts in the same exact locations as your first support rail. Now, repeat these steps for your third support rail. Step 2. Assemble and mount the first center spool bracket. There are two spool brackets that we will assemble and secure to the outer support rails. Let's start with the first one. Use the following. Two plates, two hex bolts, two T-nuts, 
a spool, and your gearbox. First, secure the gearbox to the spool bracket with four holes. Tighten using a 3 8 inch socket. As you can see, the spool has a square and round end. Insert the square end into the gearbox. Now, take the plate with the smaller, black-rimmed hole and slide it over the circular end of the spool. Next, insert your hex bolts into the two top holes of your brackets and loosely fasten your T-nuts. Ensure that the teeth of the T-nuts are facing down. Now, let's mount the first center spool bracket with the gearbox on one of the outer support rails. Before doing so, you need to consider this. The gearbox is what you'll use to raise and lower your scissor loft, so it should be easily accessible. We recommend using the support rail that is furthest from the wall. Mount the first center spool bracket so the center of the spool aligns with the center of the support rail. Always make sure your T-nuts are rotated clockwise a full 90 degrees before tightening. Note, the T-nuts do not rotate a full 90 degrees when inside the male-female connector, or when there is interference from the lag bolts. This is why it is key to center the spool brackets with the center of your outer support rails. Use your drill with a 1 half inch socket to tighten. Step 3. Assemble and mount the second spool bracket. Use the following. One plate, two hex bolts, two T-nuts, one 3 8 inch hex bolt, one 3 8 inch hex nut, and your spool. We're going to repeat what we did with the other spool. Again, to assemble your second spool bracket, insert the round end of the spool into the black rimmed hole. Now, insert the 3 8 inch hex bolt into the circular end of the spool. Fasten the nut, and tighten the bolt using a 7 16 inch socket and wrench. Now we're going to mount the second spool bracket on the rail opposite of the gearbox. Again, align your spool bracket with the center of your support rail. After it's centered, tighten the hex bolts with a 1 half inch socket. Step 4. Mount the spool arm. One of the spool arm's ends is circular, and the other is square. The square end will connect with the circular end of the spool. The circular end of the spool arm will connect with the square end of the spool. Insert the 3 8 inch hex bolts and fasten the nuts on each end of the spool arm. Tighten the bolts using a 7 16 inch socket and wrench. Step 5. Assemble and mount the outer end brackets. Assemble the first outer end bracket by inserting the six hex bolts and T-nuts. Ensure the T-nuts teeth are facing down toward the bracket. Do the same with the second outer end bracket. Now let's mount one of the outer end brackets. First, measure 31 and a half inches from the outside edge of the center spool bracket. And mark it on your support rail with a pencil. Do the same for the support rail on the opposite side.
Now we're ready to align and mount the first outer end bracket. Notice there's a triangular shape on the center of the bracket. We call this the flange. It is very important that the flange is facing inwards towards the center spool arm. Insert each of the T-nuts in their corresponding rails track. Similar to the center spool brackets, insert the T-nuts parallel to the support rails and then rotate them a full 90 degrees clockwise. Do not fully tighten as you will have to adjust its position to align with your 31 and a half inch measurements. Now let's mount the second outer end bracket following the same procedure. Remember that it should be 31 and a half inches away from the center spool brackets. and that the flange should be facing inwards. Once you have the bracket in place, tighten the bolts with a drill using a 1 half inch socket. Step 6. Assemble the pulleys. You will be using four red pulley wheels and four shoulder bolts and nuts. Begin by mounting the first pulley wheel. Ensure that your cables are untangled. Drape the cable over the red pulley wheel so that it fits into the groove of the wheel. Then, place the wheel inside the wheel housing and secure using a shoulder bolt and nut. Tighten using an 11 16 inch socket and a 7 32 inch Allen wrench. Repeat this step for the other three remaining pulley wheels. Step 7. Assemble the frame. The frame's base is made up of nine parts. These pieces will form a rectangle with a center support bracket. We recommend building the frame on a flat surface, like the ground, to avoid any possible bending or bowing. First, we're going to assemble the long sides of the frame by connecting two L-shaped side brackets. Each side bracket has a set of holes on their ends, two circular-shaped holes on one side, and four oval-shaped holes on the other. Ensure that the oval cutouts meet at the center. Now, identify the connector angles, these are used to connect the side brackets to the center support bracket. Let's start with one side of the frame. Insert and loosely hand tighten the four hex bolts on the outer holes of the connector angle so it holds the L-shaped brackets together. Then, Place the center bracket and match its four holes with the center holes that are still free on the connector angle. Bolt them together using four hex bolts and loosely tighten the bolts. Do not fully tighten until the entirety of the frame is assembled. Also, make sure you insert every bolt during this step with their hex nuts on the inside and their heads on the outside. Repeat these steps for the opposite side of the frame. Next, connect the long sides of the frame with the shorter ends of the frame using two hex bolts on each corner. Now, make sure that all of the bolts are in place and the frame is aligned properly. Proceed to tighten all of the bolts with your drill using a 7 16 inch socket, holding the nuts firmly with a 7 16 inch wrench. Step 8. 
Step 8. Attach the cables to the frame. Let's look at the cables now. They are already factory balanced, so that both ends of the cables hang at the same height from the spool. We need to connect the frame to the cables on all four corners. At the end of the cables, there are large eye bolts with a loop at the top. We will use these to connect the cables to the frame. We recommend connecting the cables to the frame while the frame is still resting on the ground, lifting one side at a time. If this is difficult for you, use two ladders or a sawhorse to support the frame. If necessary, ask for assistance. The eye bolts have two black nuts and two washers. Start by removing the lower nut and washer of one of them. Leave the upper nut and washer on the bolt. Now, insert the eye bolt in one of the corner slots on the frame. Secure it on the other side by fastening the nut and washer you removed. Hand tighten it for now. Repeat this process on the remaining three corners of the frame. Turn the eye bolts loops so they are parallel to the short sides of the frame. Using a level, check each of the frame sides to see if it is correctly balanced and level. If it isn't, you can adjust the nuts on the eye bolts to raise or lower a specific corner. When level, tighten the nuts using a 9 16 inch wrench and socket. Step 9. Assemble your crank. First, determine if you wish to use the hand crank or the drill attachment. We highly encourage using the drill attachment. If you wish to use the hand crank, connect the handle to the extension rod and tighten using a 9 16 inch wrench and socket. If you wish to use the drill attachment, connect the metal piece with a bolt washers, and nut. Tighten with your drill and a wrench. Now hang the extension rod's hook on the metal loop sticking out of the gearbox. By turning this crank, you'll be able to spin the spools, thus raising and lowering the frame. To avoid any possible overlapping of the cables, always turn the extension rod in the counterclockwise direction when raising the frame, and lower it in the clockwise direction. Step 10. Insert the trays. Insert the six tray support angles into the slots on the side brackets of the frame. Remember the center support bracket of the frame? We are going to place three of the support angles to its right, and three to its left. Look for the small slots running along the side brackets of the frame, and insert the support angles in them, one by one, connecting the little flanges on their ends. Use a rubber mallet if necessary. The next thing we need to do is put the three trays on the frame, which are supported by the support angles. One of the trays has a center cutout on its shorter sides. Place this tray in the middle of the frame. Then, place the outer two trays on each side of the middle one. The outer two trays are identical, so it doesn't matter which side you place them on. Okay. We're almost finished. Step 11. Attach the scissor stabilizers to the frame. Note, this step is optional, as most homeowners prefer access to their scissor support loft from all four sides. The scissors help stabilize the unit when loading and unloading. However, they are not required for supporting the weight of the frame. 
When storing longer items, like a Christmas tree or a canoe, it is best to skip this step and your installation is now complete. If you wish to add the scissor stabilizers, let's start by raising the frame approximately halfway up. Remember to raise it in the counterclockwise direction so the cables don't overlap on the spool. Each end of the scissors has one flat-faced side and another with a protruding bend. It's helpful to rest the lower portion of the scissor inside the frame's edge for support when mounting the scissors to the top. Locate the long cutout slots on the outer end brackets. Make sure to secure the flat side of the scissors to the slots using pins, plastic washers, metal washers, and fasteners. Alternate the scissor arms so the flat surfaces are held against the frame, one on the inside, one on the outside. Ensure that the plastic washers make contact with the slotted metal. This is important as the metal washers will cause too much friction. Now secure the bottom end of the scissor stabilizers to the frame using the same process. We need to do the same on the other side. Note, do not raise the tray more than 22 inches from the ceiling because your cables will begin to overlap on the spool if you do so. To avoid this, we will secure and tighten the stoppers to the appropriate height on the cables. As their name suggests, they stop or prevent the tray from going beyond your desired maximum height. After determining your desired maximum height, slide the stoppers up on the cables until they make contact with the pulley wheels. Tighten the U-bolts to the cable at your desired height. For this example, we place the stoppers 22 inches from the ceiling, as the frame should not be raised any higher than this. Congratulations! Your installation is now complete. If you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you, and enjoy your new scissor loft!